the way Oprah has treated so many rappers um, over the years, dating back to the Oprah Winfrey show and how she would not allow these rappers on her show, although they were doing phenomenal things. Now, don't get me wrong. There were some rappers who were allowed on her show, but... At the time that they were allowed, they were either squeaky clean or they were box office big and it fed into ratings. First, I want to start off by saying I have nothing but the utmost respect for the careers of Gayle King and Oprah Winfrey. What they've done in their careers have been nothing short of inspirational, aspirational, and part of the reason I'm sitting in this seat is because of people like Oprah Winfrey. I'm so inspired by her. You know, the work that she has done as a black woman and what she's done for black people overall. I give kudos to both her and Gail. But in light of Gail King's interview with Lisa Leslie and, you know, what so many of us consider to be inappropriate questions that she asked about Kobe, I feel that, number one, the, the, the question itself, let's just say as a journalist, it had to be asked. You asked Lisa Leslie about Kobe Bryant and, and the past rape allegations which he had, you know, in his lifetime before his demise, you know, it, it was dismissed. He was clear to those charges. When Lisa says, hey, you know what? The Kobe I know would never have done anything like that. He was always a gentleman to women. You come back with a follow-up question that it's, you know, of course, you're his friend. He would never show you that side of himself. That rubbed people the wrong way because it's almost accusatory it's all and this feeds into the narrative that so many you know black women black men and the hip-hop culture has overall is that you guys are against your own people but i think that it's you know part the more i think about it it's it's part generational you know you guys came up during a different generation. Oprah often speaks about um, being raised as a poor black woman in the South and Jim Crow. And it's, you know, her generation was for um, the inclusion of, of equal rights. But this, the way Oprah has treated so many rappers um, over the years, dating back to the Oprah Winfrey show, and how she would not allow these rappers on her show, although they were doing phenomenal things. Now, don't get me wrong. There were some rappers who were allowed on her show. But at the time that they were allowed, they were either squeaky clean or they were box office big and it fed into ratings. We can all go back and think of, you know, Crash, the movie Crash, won an Oscar for movie of the year. The entire cast is invited on to the show. Ludacris is sitting there and barely had, you know, two questions thrown to him where he was allowed to speak on the show. I think back to Ice Cube. This is a man who written and produced several box office or, or, or blockbuster films in Hollywood. This is a black man, yes, part of NWA, part of gangster rap culture, but you know, that's one persona. The, obviously this man is uh, an intelligent, articulate um, businessman and he broke into Hollywood. You know, he had movies like Barbershop and, 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 and Friday um, and you invite the cast onto your show and never invite him. He's 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 a writer. He's he's um, not just a writer, but a producer of these films. Why wouldn't the hip hop community feel as though you have something against them? Um, I think that the disconnect between generations, because don't get me wrong, Oprah, Gail, you guys, you've done so much for black people. You've done so much for black men. But when it comes to the hip-hop generation, 
I, I, I think that the, the, the black men thing, the lines get really, really blurred for you guys. Um, you know, I sit and I look and, and you're probably wondering why you're taking so much heat now. A few months ago, Leaving Neverland comes out. Michael Jackson been dead for years, dead and gone. They do the documentary on HBO about Leaving Neverland. His rape accusers in a, 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 a trial that he was ultimately acquitted of. His rape accusers who accused him, recanted, took money, came back and accused him again. They get this documentary on HBO. And then you, go, Oprah, go one step further and decide that you want to do an Oprah Winfrey special after leaving Neverland. Bring these two young accusers onto your show. Now they're grown men. And you essentially... Add insult to injury to the to to the legacy of Michael Jackson by basically accusing a man who's no longer here to defend himself. And unfortunately for you, Gail King, that is exactly how it feels with this community, this hip hop community, for what you've done to Kobe Bryant. You guys may look at hip hop as you know rappers. But for us, being part of the hip hop community and part of hip hop culture, rap is only one element of hip hop culture. So for us, we look at the Kobe Bryants of the world, the Russell Simmons of the world. The, the, you know, there are so many greats that have been birthed out of hip hop culture. And when you go against these men and you, you know, decide you want to, to produce a documentary going against Russell Simmons, who knows, you know, we don't know. We just know it's a bunch of accusations. He's never been tried. He's never been found guilty. But you want to essentially produce a documentary that is going to, to tarnish the the lifelong work that this man has done within the, the, the hip hop community, but the world of, of entertainment overall. That doesn't sit well with people. When you speak about someone like Kobe Bryant, and don't, don't get me wrong, you know, there has been others, um, others of different races who have done things and, and said things since Kobe's demise. But the fact of the matter is there is this history that seems to be presenting himself itself. And when you guys find yourself now, because Oprah, your royalty, Gail, your royalty, we look at you guys as, as you guys are so aspirational. And your older women, your older black women, and going back to, to, to the Oprah show, Oprah, you're not having people on your show. Let's just say you didn't like the lyrics of some of these hip hop superstars. Why not invite him on and say, look, this is why your lyrics are offensive to our generation of black women and to the world as a whole and educate them. Sit them down as older black women speaking to younger black men. But to just have rapists on your show, to have child molesters on your show, to have murderers on your show, and then draw a line in the sand and say, hey, rappers are not allowed on my show? Put yourself on the, 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 the other side of that line and think about how people like Ice Cube feels or Snoop Dogg feels or so many others who were never allowed to come onto your show during their prime. It doesn't sit well. But yes, to your credit, you went to Marcy Projects with Jay-Z. To your credit, you had um, Wyclef Jean. You went to Haiti with him. And you had um, uh, 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 Kanye West on your show. But these, how could you afford not to? How could you? And, and then when you, when you had them, they were crossover hits. You considered them to be safe. 
but their lyrics never changed. If you go back and listen to the lyrics that they had when they were coming up versus the lyrics that they had when you decided to bring them onto your platform, the lyrics were the same. It just now they were they the ratings and and in they were crossover stars. So it just seems a little contradictory that you would cherry pick when you can bring these rappers onto your show and when you can embrace them. I don't think anybody anybody watching this myself included you know would ever say that you have not done your part for the world for black people for black men black women as a whole i love the way you honor the motown era i love the way you honor the greats of r b but when you see artists like snoop dogg railing against gail king when you see artists like Lil Bootsy and 50 Cent railing against you guys because you refuse to say anything about Harvey Weinstein, you have to ask yourself why and you have to hold yourself accountable. So for Gail, because this, this video wouldn't have been made if it wasn't for that interview, it's not CBS fault. It's not that clip's fault. It is, it was poor timing, it was in poor taste. Granted, you're a journalist, you have to ask the question, but there's a way to ask the question and do it with some compassion, do it with some empathy for the family, do it with some empathy for the fact that Kobe Bryant has three, <clears throat> three kids left behind and a wife. It shouldn't have made, it should not have been made to sound accusatory, which it did. And I'm sure in the total scheme of the interview, maybe that's just one small part. But this is what networks have been doing to interviewees for years and years and years and years. And now you're just on the other side of it. I would say I truly believe, Oprah, Gail, you guys do love black people. I truly believe that you love black males, but we are not going to all be squeaky clean. We are not going to all fit into the corporate model and, you know, speak and articulate like <clears throat> the ones you choose to embrace, um, like a Tyler Perry, uh, a, a Lee Daniels. Some of us come from the other side of the tracks, but we have great intentions in our heart. We, we are trying to do the best we can with what we know how to do. It would be so nice if you, Oprah, you, Gail, decided to embrace us and show an example to so many others out there who might not understand the way we speak, who might not understand the communities that we come from, but if you shun us, why wouldn't they? Something for you to think about. Peace and love make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.